Hello and welcome to another 3D Buzz training video. We are once again continuing with our AT AT series where Zach is modeling an AT AT like creature. Creature, yes. yes. Thing from <laughs> the Star Type Wars type movie yes. type stuff. Yes. So continuing on where we left off the other day, Zach is working on the foot, I believe now moving up to the ankle. That's right. We're going to build on the ankle piece tonight. And I noticed something just a second ago when I launched up the file. Uh, the vertices here are no longer even with one another. There's okay. this funny upward slant, so I'm going to fix that real quick. Let me check my snap settings. They are set to vertices, which is good. Uh, let me get the move tool out, and I'll hit the S key, and we'll just snap this guy right there, and that should solve that little problem. Cool. Okay, now, I don't think that this thing is proportionally correct. Now, I've got the image planes here, and I've got pictures galore that I could glance at. Now, this is from a museum piece that I believe is the studio model, but there's pieces missing. Uh, it's, it's a 20-year-old model. Sure. Yeah, so, I mean, anything ancient. could have happened. So, uh, you know, we can dig through as much of this as we can. Uh, you know, that looks pretty good. Gives us an idea that it's kind of taller on top than maybe it is on the bottom. But I'm just going to eyeball it. I'll pull this down. I think maybe these guys could scale out a little bit. Um, maybe everything could be pulled in just a tad. That's looking pretty close, at least to get us started. Now, we don't want to just check that view. There's other views we need to kind of verify as well. Actually, that's not looking too terrible. Let's take a look at some other pictures. Did I lose my... Oh, we're just in the wireframe view. That probably won't help us too much, because I think we decided early on that the legs were kind of skinny in we the image planes. So. Yeah, uh, ridiculously me... skinny in those images. Yeah, I'm gonna take just a moment. Okay, here, well, here's a good shot of mm -hmm. what these things look like from the front. So, if we get something close to that, which we kind of already which is have, about where it's at. It's yeah. about where it's at. I'm gonna take the vertices up here and just sort of scale them away from one another, just a little bit. Uh, let's go out to, I want to call it object mode, but get out of subobject mode. I'm gonna take the one in the back and go ahead and delete it so it's not in my way and no longer a distraction. Okay, now there's a couple of things that I want to draw everybody's attention to that for sake of ease, maybe you know, I could just say it's a game model. I could make up a, a whole yard of excuses for you. These things here, mm -hmm. they are technically indentions, and they've got a little tube coming out of them. You know, of course, you'd probably want to Boolean these, mm -hmm. and then you could extrude out. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. I'm going to stick a cylinder through those and extrude in the cylinder and call it even. Okay. And I think that's going to be more than enough. If you wanted to, of course, you could use ambient occlusion on the texture to help that look like there's some shadow around it. All sorts of ways you could handle that, but I don't see a, a point in spend, <clears throat> excuse me, spending a great deal of time on uh, Booleaning those in. So let's create a cylinder. Ooh, I need to double check something, too. My grid, I still have this thing as my active grid, so I need to switch that off before I try to build anything in a side view. If you uh, try to build something in a side view with a custom grid on, you'll often notice it doesn't do anything for you. So there's just a random cylinder that we built. Let's go into the front view or the side view, one of these, and poke that through. Let's change a few of its properties. First off, height segments, we don't need so many. Sides, uh, let me try 24 and see what that gives us in terms of rounding. Um, pull down the radius a little bit, and for the height, make sure that it goes all the way through. And we'll slide that in so it kind of lines up there, pull back on the height a little bit. Okay, and then I'm just going to shift drag out another copy. Like so, in fact, let me double check that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shift drag that guy out and make sure this is set to instance instead of copy. Yeah, I like that better. So that I can model one and ignore the other, because ignoring stuff is always fun. Now, let's switch this over to an editable poly. Press 2 to go to edges. Of course, it won't let you loop that guy on the end, so we'll jump over and grab polygons, hold down control and select edges. Let's chamfer both sides of that. And that's a little bit over chamfered. Pull down that amount just a little bit. And I think that looks pretty good. Go back to polygons. We still have both of those. We will inset. Now, just a quick question for Shoot. you. Do you lose your um, your instance communication between the Apparently two? Apparently I did, but that's After okay. Converting it. I'll just instance it back and then pretend like that never happened. And... Uh, as long as you guys are willing to treat it like a secret, then... Yeah, I just wanted to point it out in case somebody was kind yeah. of looking like, what's going on? Yeah, I was too there for a second, but, you know, 
All right, let's grab the settings there, and I think that'll work. So, yeah, I think that's going to give us everything we need in terms of detail for that one piece. Again, if you wanted to, you could Boolean that in. I just don't see a real point. Unless you were to go in really crazy on the detail, and even if you were, we've done enough Boolean where I'm sure you could do that on your own if you sure. really wanted to. Okay, so moving on from here. Now i got to start sifting through some of my reference imagery for this next bit, which... Uh, these things down here, they, these are funny. They're kind of like toilet seat covers mm -hmm. with little holes in the top. And the way I'm going to build those, uh, I guess I could start off here in the side view because we could kind of build this to the, uh, the reference plane. Uh, let's grab a cylinder, and I'm going to make this about as big as the inside of that thing. Give it just a little tiny amount of radius. I don't need much because I'm going to end up losing it here in just a moment anyway. Let's right-click, grab this guy, hit Z. Uh, is he round enough? That's the big question. Do we have a bunch of nickeling we're dealing with? I see enough to get me a little concerned. So let's set this up to maybe 32 units. How's that looking? I think for just about any viewable distance, that'll be okay. Mm. Go with 34. Uh, with 30, those two more edges, they're going to make all the difference? Okay, let me try 36. Okay, I'm not going to go any further. 36 is it. Uh, let's right click, convert this over to an editable poly. Now, uh, we're going to go to polygons, select this polygon, hit control I, and delete. So we're basically just uh, narrowing this down to a single disk. Okay, now this is where stuff starts to get fun. I'm going to grab this polygon. We will inset it a lot. So here's a whole bunch of inset. And click OK. We'll take our little inset and we'll slide it up. I love how that looks. I don't know why, but that's interesting to me. Okay, and now let's extrude this, not out, but inward just a little bit. Click OK. We'll give that a little bit of inset. That's way too much. Make about like so. Click OK. Let's extrude again, and that looks good. All right, now we'll switch over to edges. Give me this edge. Can we loop it? Of course we can. That's excellent. Now I'm going to hold down Shift and copy that edge out, because that's a border edge, so we can do that. Now we'll jump over here back to the side view. Go back to vertices, let's get all of these vertices, and let's see if we can't get away with making those planar in Y, and slide them up just a tad. That takes care of that little flattened spot on the bottom. Let's go back over to edges, and we'll scale up these edges all by themselves. Hold down shift, and we'll scale them out as a clone. Still holding down shift, we'll move them back a little bit for a tad of thickness, and then we could just call it right there if we wanted to. Now, as an option, and you don't really have to do this, but, you know, I'd consider it, we could grab the border edge here and cap that off. And that is so that when we uh, want to slap this on here, we can use the align against object and just click, click, and drop it right on. So that's looking pretty good. Of course, there are some modeling we could do to it. Let's hit F4 so that we can see some edges. And uh, let's chamfer a few things. So let's grab U and loop. And we'll clean this up with a chamfer. And we don't need much. So just a little bit of chamfer. And we'll hit apply. Now let's grab this edge. And we'll loop that as well. And that looks pretty good. And grab U. And maybe at the same time go ahead. Not you, but your friend here. And we can loop both of those and chamfer, and that's looking pretty good, I think. Now, uh, let's go to the entire element and take a quick look at our smoothing groups. Pull this down to, oh, I don't know, let's try 20 degrees and auto smooth. Press F4. Pretty good. We could, of course, try chamfering some of those edges a little bit more, but I don't think we necessarily have to. I do want to try this, though. Wrong guy. Right. Gonna zoom in there. And you, and you, and you, and you. All right, cool. Now let's try chamfering these. Okay. No, no complaints today. No. What's going on, man? I'm like scared, like you're saving them up for some big devastating attack that I won't be ready for. Yeah, I'm sure you do you think? 
I don't buy it. If you're following along at home, do you buy it? No, me either. I'm scared. Okay. So, F4. Let's go ahead and jump out, take a quick look. All right, so we will need to adjust our smoothing groups again here in just a moment. We'll deal with that now. Do, 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 do. And, you know, maybe we could push these all the way up to 30. Eh, okay, we start to get that, but don't let that freak you out just yet. Uh, because what we can do there is go back to polygons, select by angle, let's push this down to about 10 degrees, click all of these, and make sure that they are 100% planar. Whoa! What in the world just happened there? Oh, I had two, uh, two different polygons selected. We selected through, so let's make sure ignore back facing is on. Okay, that looks safer anyway. And we'll hit make planar. And I still see some funny shading, so... Pink. Yeah, so we're going to have to bring down that smoothing group setting just a little bit. That was worth a shot. Alright, so let's pull this back down to 20. And auto smooth. That's not bad. I don't even think you'd notice. Nah. Alright, so here's the deal. Now that's perfectly circular, except for, of course, for the bottom, which I think the piece is, but if we found out it wasn't, of course, we could just scale at the vertex level. So let's get back out to um, object mode, and let's align this over to the object. So what, is that, what do they call that? That's normal align. I keep forgetting, because I want to call it like Maya's, what is it, snap uh, align objects or something like that. So there we go. That looks good. Good, mostly good. Didn't quite get the rotation I was shooting for. But I'll fix that from here. And let's turn off uh, angle snapping so that I can get a nice, precise rotation. All right. Cool beans. And we'll slide that over. Let's hold down shift and drag out a copy. And we can make it an instance. Maybe if I go back in and decide I want to change something, then that'll be good to have. Okay, now, let's take a look at this piece again. Let's see if we can find another picture of it. That's pretty good. Ooh, now we're getting somewhere. Do, 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 do. So we can see there's another little piece that kind of tapers out here that holds on to... Uh, what will become that funny shock that connects these. Now, again, right. I think this is the studio model. It's just ancient and missing a bunch of things. So we need a little extrusion here on the front. We need a hole carved in for uh, the little track thing to roll through. And we need this piece over here on the side. So let's take a quick look at adding those in. Now, the piece on the front. Now it's flipping through the pictures here, and I saw something. Um, let me see if I can show it to you all of these photos. Now this is that's a cheap plastic model. I'll refer to that only if I absolutely have to. Ooh, what do we got here? Alright, so it looks like it's flat right there. Like it doesn't have any extra lines or anything going down it. I just wanted to make sure. So let's select this guy. Let's go over to faces. And we might as well do both sides at the same time. Inset. It doesn't really matter how far in I go, because I'm going to have to change it anyway. We'll click OK. Let me shift over to Edges and hit F4. I want this edge and this edge. And I'm going to scale these down. Let's go back to Polygons. A little bit of Extrude action. Okay. Looking nice so far. Now we can grab both of these guys and do another inset. And we'll probably need to make some minor adjustments here. Let's see if we can pull this out just so it goes out past the bottom there. And then I'll make my adjustments accordingly. So uh, we'll click OK there, jump over to edges. Let me get you and you. And we'll scale these in. Let's grab these two as well. And we'll scale these in. Now, let's see here. Let's do 
face constraints. turn off face constraints just while I remember that because if I forget I'll break something later almost certainly all right so I go back over to polygons we still have both of those selected let's extrude those inward to make a hole and we could probably just stop it right about there and put some sort of a black or darkening texture on that and it would be just fine Okay, so this is all coming along pretty well. Before we go too much further, that would be a good idea to get a few chamfers in, start cleaning the shape up. So, uh, let's jump back over to edges, and I'm going to be kind of picky, choosy, selective about who gets chamfered and who does not. I'm going to grab that one just on principle. It's so... well, you might not even notice that it gets chamfered, but we're going to grab it anyway just to be on the safe side. I'm going to do those guys separately. Let's do the inside of the hole separately as well. So, I think this is everybody. Oh, missed one. Looks about right. So let's give this a chamfer. And we'll just pull our amount down. Click OK. All right, looking good so far. Let's get the inside of these holes. Now that should be loopable, and it is, which is great. And we'll chamfer that and push up the amount just a little bit. Uh, not much. Now this probably won't be loopable. I'm not even going to bother. We'll just grab the two polygons, hold down Control, and click Edges, and then we'll chamfer these guys. And that looks fine. So that's all chamfered. Let's press F4 and step back and see what we've done. Starting to take shape. Yeah, starting to come along. Okay, a uh, couple of things. Let's see, get out of sub-object mode. I want you and you and your two buddies over here. We're going to hit the M key and make sure that we assign our modeling material. I guess we could do the same over here. Um, he also could use his... Uh, smoothing groups adjusted. So let's grab the entire thing as an element. Uh, you know, 45 will probably work just as good as anything else. Alright. Go ahead and throw the material on him, because that's why you visited him. Because that's why I went and saw him. And bump. Cool. And I think that's coming along pretty well. Okay, so now we've got this funny piece that sits over here and holds on what's going to eventually become that uh, really cool shock. Hydraulic shaft. Hydraulic shaft thing. And we've got a lot of kind of incomplete shots of this. It's like, I don't know if anybody's ever really focused on this and really shown us what it looks like. Uh, but we can get close. And I'm sure that we can get close enough where everyone's going to know exactly what it is and why it's there. This is a pretty good shot of it. Mm -hmm. And when I was looking at this earlier, I was thinking, you know, this looks a lot like those pieces we just built, mm -hmm. maybe just a little bit different. So what if we modified one of those into that piece? It could save us a lot of time, and we get something that I'm sure would be close enough to the real deal. So let's get out of sub-object mode with whatever we've got. I'm going to grab one of these guys and clone him off. And this one I do not want to instance because I will end up breaking something if I do. We won't worry so much about the rotation. I guess I'm going to have to, because what I want to do is make sure that he's not, well, he needs to be lined up at least kind of, you know, appropriately. I'll get him exact here in just a moment. All right, let's start off by getting him kind of squared up. He's going to be a little bigger. He's going to take up most of that whole side, or at least it looks like it's bigger to me. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's jump in here to vertices. I'm going to grab all the vertices around our little hole here, and this hole now needs to be at the top. So let's take our reference coordinate system and we'll set it to parent, which basically just follows the orientation of the object itself, and we can slide this up like so. Now, all the pictures that I'm looking at makes it look like this domes out a little bit. Yeah, I agree. So we need to dome it somehow. What I'm going to do is press F4 so I can see some edges and eh, maybe pull that down just a little more. Let me get a feel for it. That's about right. 
Now we'll switch over to edges. I'll grab this guy. We'll ring it. And let's connect it a few times. One more. Okay, so we have all of these different uh, connections now. And I'll press 4. Grab this single polygon here in the middle. And I'm going to grow it. Uh, let's see, maybe get all the way out to there. And we'll say that's the point that should be nice and flat. Now let's get out of parent mode. We'll go back to view. So that's nice and neat. Let's go down to soft selection. And we'll activate use soft selection. And I want to see shaded face toggling because it's easier for me to understand. We'll pull this down. And it's probably going to be a lot easier for me if I switch on edge distance. So we can maximize how far out that can go. Let's pull that back down so it can't ever really reach that edge. And maybe play with the pinching just a little bit. And usually, you know, to be honest, I've got to pull this out a few times and see what it's given me and then go from there. So maybe not so much pinching. That's pretty close. If I could get it to flow down just a little further, I'd be happier. There we go. Now we're starting to get something. So we'll get out of sub-object mode. Let's press F4. And there we go. So I need to make this maybe just a little bit bigger. Now I'm going to scale this at the vertex level. Let's turn off soft selection before I break something. Uh, let's see. Has use back facing? Yeah, ignore back facing is on. Let's make sure that we have that on so I can grab everybody. And, uh, well, I would need a different view, so we'll just kind of guess it from here. Down just a little bit. We'll get out of sub-object mode. Let's put this guy into position. And give him some rotation. And maybe tweak his position just a little more. And I think we got something. Cool. All right, so now this takes us to the hydraulic shock piece. So we're going to start off by, there's a couple of different ways you could go about this. You could build it as a functional hydraulic shock, or you could not. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that it is built out of two pieces, like a, a shaft and a, a main housing cylinder, just in case we do need it to flex a little bit later. So let's just start off, <clears throat> excuse me, with a cylinder. Pardon me, guys. <clears throat> And uh, let's see here. Let me activate this grid again. And before I even do that, let's verify. Okay, yeah, because at one point that grid was rotated kind of strangely, and mm -hmm. it's kind of had me frightened ever since. So we'll reactivate it so I can build something down here. Create a little cylinder. I guess little is sort of a relative term at this point. Now, in all the pictures that I've seen of this thing, and of course this thing doesn't even have these shocks, we've got to click back through some of our pictures. That guy's got them. I was actually looking for some of my movie pictures, but you can see that. I mean, we've got a smaller shaft going into a bigger shaft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can just leave it at that. Now, the question is whether or not you think it's appropriate to like extrude, like if this were the housing and you're going to build a smaller shaft coming out of this, do you think it's appropriate to uh, make an extrusion that goes up and seem, make that look hollowed out? You know, I don't think it's really all that necessary for our purposes, but you could do it. Um, what I'm going to do is come over here and take the height and we'll bring it down a little bit. I can always uh, modify that at the editable poly level to whatever height I need this to be. I'm going to duplicate this guy with just a quick shift drag and we'll bring down the radius and really bring down the height. I don't want to make the height. Oh, okay. I see what's going on. There we go. What in the world? Okay. Zero that out. And there we go. That's <laughs> get me all confused for no reason. All right. Let's take this guy, right click and convert him over to an editable poly. Now, Probably won't let me loop that, which is fine. We'll just grab the polygon and control click on edges to get a hold of that. Let's chamfer this out. And that's a little much. And you know, we could add a couple of segments to it if we just wanted to be nice and super ultra mega thorough. 
Now let's get out of uh, sub-object mode here. We can grab this guy, slide him down, maybe give him a little more height because we kind of want him to stick up through here <clears throat> to give us just a, a, little, more, a little more leeway. Mm -hmm. So we'll increase the height so that it goes kind of up inside like so. All right. And that's probably about all we need there. Now, one of the more difficult or, I guess, interesting to look at pieces is going to be this guy who's actually on top of the, uh, the hydraulic shaft. And there's only a couple of pictures that really show this off. Let's see. It's not going to be any of these guys. Here you can't really see it because it's only a few pixels. Oh, here you can start to see it. So it's kind of like a capsule, mm -hmm. but it's got these two cutaways on either side. Now, <laughs> it looks like it's hinged. It, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a, a universal it, joint. Yep, which makes it do that. Yeah, so, and you've got like this uh, overall capsuloid shape. You've got these two uh, semi cylindrical cutaways on it, mm -hmm. and then you've got sort of a shaft running through it. Now, I can only surmise that there's probably also a groove cut around the top of that so that you could slide um, this shaft piece in there and then run a bolt through it so they actually work. So that's how I'm going to end up building the thing. So let's begin by grabbing extended primitives and uh, we'll get out a capsule. And this is where we'll start. Now, does this guy have enough sides? Probably not. Uh, 12 is pretty low. Let me try. 32 of that size is actually pretty extreme. But we could go with it anyway. And let's see. Let's hit F4 so I can see. Ooh, that is pretty heavy. Uh, I don't think that's going to pose a problem for us. Really, the only danger zones, uh, quote-unquote, that we've got to worry about here are going to be those two semi-cylindrical cutaways that chop those out, which we're going to be do, uh, doing with a Boolean operation that we'll have to go in and manually clean up. So let's go ahead and convert this over to an editable poly. Let's press 4. I'm going to switch us over into windowed mode instead of crossing. We'll delete out the bottom of this thing, hit 3, select my edges, and we need to cap this guy off. Oh, soft selection is getting in my way. I knew things felt different for some reason. So we'll slide this up a little bit. Now, the uh, gap that we'll have in the center here, there's a couple of different ways we could go about creating that. And it's really just kind of a matter of how, I guess, how clean you want everything to look when you're done. Let's see here. Um, if I grab... Now here's where the on-the-fly the on the part to this show kind of comes into effect. Because I'm pretty sure this is going to work, but, you know, it might not. Don't tell your friends if it doesn't. Do, 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 do. And what do you want to bet I'm selecting through right now? Frighteningly? No, I'm not. So let's make sure we turn on ignore backfacing. I'm too worried about painting because my uh, faces get so small up here at the top. It'd probably be more of a hindrance than anything else. What I'm tempted to do is cut these out, separate the vertex in the middle, and planarize everything. But I'm worried about what that's going to do to these vertices. You know what? Never you mind, never you mind. Uh, let's actually, I'll create these two little cutaways, and then what I'll probably end up doing is making a third boolean that just chops all that out. We won't worry about it. Don't stress what you don't have to. Okay, now in the a front-like view, something that shows either the front or back of this thing, I need to make a couple of cylinders, or at least one cylinder that I can clone. And to do that, I should probably switch off my little temporary grid, which is floating way out here. So let's activate the home grid, jump over here, let's create a new cylinder, standard primitives, and... Let's got 32 sides. Isn't that what I was setting all that to? 36. Hmm. That might be just a few too many. Let me see what I can get away with at 24. It looks nice and round from here. Not too much by way of nickeling. So we can chop that out. We can increase the radius. Something about like so. Now, I don't want it to cross into too many of these uh, edges, or too many more than it has to. Now, let's take a quick look at how this is lined up over here in perspective. 
Just slide that over here and increase its height so it runs through both sides. Okay, looking all right so far. Pull that back just a little bit more. Okay, now, reference coordinate system. Let's set this to pick. Let's grab our little capsuloid, use transform coordinate center, and then we'll mirror this thing and choose copy, which is fine. And um, ah, this will probably work just fine. I mean, you could attach the two so you could do a single Boolean, but I think this will be all right. Let's use compound objects. Boolean or pro-Boolean, I don't think it's going to matter in this case, but if we use pro-Boolean, we can pick um, two operands at the same time. So that'll keep things nice and simple for us. And I think we're good there, so let's right click, take a look at what we have. Alright, so a little bit scary as far as what's been chewed out, but don't let that freak you out just yet. Let's go ahead and convert this back over to an editable poly so we can start to fix things. Press F4 so that we can see some edges. And it's coming along, but it could use some fixing. Now what I'm going to do is just fix one uh, one quarter of this, and then I'll use a couple of uh, symmetry modifiers to actually put everything back the way it needs to be. So, let's take a look here. Jump over here to vertices, and I'm going to start off by removing any extraneous vertices that we absolutely don't need, and I'm sure there are a few. Walk around here. These guys that are attached to edges we'll deal with in a moment. We'll just start off at the vertex level. Boom. Next enemy. You... Alright, looks nice so far. Uh, it might be easier if I actually just take on both halves at the same time. Because uh, what occurs to me is if any of these are tilted, then a symmetry modifier is going to be, well, kind of fun to play with. So let's take a look at this from the truly side viewport. Alright, we will have one edge running right down the middle. That's all I really wanted to confirm. Okay, um, let's see, starting from here... Yeah, you got another story, yeah. Yeah, just spotted him. All right, let's jump over to target welding. This guy can weld, and he can weld over here. And that's going to end up with an edge running down the middle, so both of those will be quads in a moment, so no big deal. We'll just go one by one straight down the line. Now, I'm using the outermost edges of the original capsuloid as my base edges. So you notice I'm always snapping to those whenever possible. And here it's just kind of like take your pick. In fact, let's take this guy, click him, hold down control and click remove so that he can just go away and never come back. And make sure we target weld. All right. And coming along. almost feel like there should be two vertices right there. Nope, just one. Let's use him as a rotation point for just a moment. Okay, and a quick way to check and see if you've got any funny, nasty, stray vertices that you shouldn't have would be to get, a, get your hands on all these edges and try chamfering them and see what you come up with. How far can we loop around? Not too far. Seems to be holding up. Mm -hmm. Holding up so well that we could probably just leave that. Um, yeah, I don't really have a problem with that. We could always attach these guys straight across. Here, bear with me just a moment. We'll get that taken care of. I don't see any reason to undo that chamfer right now. Uh, let's grab the cut tool, and we could jump straight across here. And we could, let's see... I wonder if it will play nice and let me do a split that runs all the way up here. There's something that another of my favorite applications can't do. And let's go ahead and get our symmetry modifier on here before we go much further. 
tap the S key a few hundred times and grab symmetry and flip it. <laughs> Not bad. Let's go ahead and convert that back over to an editable poly. Just to get rid of that symmetry modifier, collapse our stack down. And then just to be on the safe side. Not that you'd have to do this, but just because it's nice, we can split these straight across here. And this will give us some nice quadded, or mostly quadded geometry. It'll be quadded when I'm done. Now, of course, we could drop another symmetry modifier on there to get that on the other side. But in the time it takes me to do that, I could probably just click over here a few times and have all this done, too. All right. So I have a nice clean piece of geometry that is sitting there doing its thing. Now, a couple of things. I'm going to take all of these vertices that we've created here. I'm going to slide them down the shape a little bit. If uh, Max will allow me that. There we go. Just so I have a little bit more room to create that notch up there in the top. Let's take a look at this angle. And yeah, let's go to create and uh, regular standard primitive. Let's make a box. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Well, maybe a little more. We'll uh, we'll use the align tool to get it all lined up in just a moment anyway. So let's align to you. Um, that's fine. I'll just slide it up where I need it to. And it looks like our move tool is still kind of set to something interesting. We'll slide that over and slide that over because it doesn't really matter if it sticks through at all. Let's increase its height. So it's poking through and looking pretty good. I kind of want to increase the width of it, but maybe I'm being overly picky about it. It's possible. I've been accused of worse. All right. Let's come back over and let's jump down to compound objects. Again, we'll grab a pro boolean, start picking, grab you, and that chops that right out. And really, at this point, you'd have a, a decision to make if you would like to spend a whole lot of time cleaning that shape up, which we probably will not need to do, mm -hmm. uh, because there's not going to be too many ways that you can really view the detail up there. Mm -hmm. And if you run up to the ankle of this thing, you would look up kind of like this, and you wouldn't really see that. Mm -hmm. And it looks pretty good as it is, so we'll go ahead and leave it that way. Uh, let's grab the guy, though, and I'm going to center up its pivot. Uh, so effect pivot only, center to object, that's good enough. And let's uh, align him. Oh, cancel. I don't know what you're trying to align to. Oh, I must have hit mirror instead of align. Uh, happens when I'm recording. Click OK. Slide this guy up. And he's a little oversized. What in the user world? User view. Oh, we are in a user view, but mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure why. So let me jump out of here. There's a perspective view. What was that supposed to be? Back view? That's a bottom view. Right click. Backs over on your left. So that would be a front view. Or at least it should have been at one point. So apparently that's been a user view, and I hadn't noticed. All right, so we can scale this in, and eh, just to be on the safe side, I don't want that to stay a pro boolean. Let's convert that over to an editable poly, grab its vertices, scale them down a bit. Um, does it look at all scary because it's now a, an editable poly? No, actually it looks pretty good. Grab those vertices, we'll scale it down just a little bit more. Let's come over to polygons. That's kind of interesting. We can grab those edges and then deselect that one edge by itself. We can chamfer this. And maybe add a segment or two just for vanity's sake. Now, let's adjust the smoothing groups. 45 degrees might even work. I'm not sure. Well, it's going to smooth that out a little much. So let's pull that back down to about 20. And that'll work. So let's do some linking here. Uh, we're going to... Really, it's all, it depends on who you want to move. Let's link this guy up to here. We'll link this guy down here. Uh, we still need the piece that's going to connect the two of these. So let me create that before we go much further. 
Now, over in our movie stills, let me see if I can jump, or not my movie stills, but the uh, the studio model that we have pictures of from the museum. Uh, let's say here, I mean, really, it's just kind of a ball on a stick, so let's see if we got a better shot than that. I think there might be one, but I don't remember. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a ball on a stick. Uh, what I'm going to do is make something that just sort of tapers down and then fits into that notch, and okay. then we'll just... Uh, leave it there. So let's uh, get out of here. Let's go over to create panel. I uh, want standard primitives. Let's get a cylinder over here in the side view. We can press F3 so we can kind of look through just a little bit. And I'll create somebody that sort of fits in there pretty well. And we can slide that over. That's not the uh, appropriate key to do that. That's actually the Z key, which I think is the F key sometimes if I've been using another famous Autodesk application. <laughs> so if you think that's funny, good on you. <clears throat> All right. So we can pull this out. Now I'm going to keep this very, very simple. Let's uh, bevel, and that's kind of the shape I'm going for, just not really to that extent and not to that much tapering. So something kind of like that really, and then we can tilt it in. Let's click OK, and then I'm going to jump over to poly, I'm sorry, vertices, not polygons, and we'll pull that in just a little bit. I would like something that kind of fills this slot. So, while we've got all these edges, let's kind of sort of make use of them. Press F4 to give me a little bit of a visualization hand. Uh, let's jump over the cut tool and jump straight down to there, and straight down to there. Grab polygons, and I don't want to cut anymore. I just want that one polygon. I want to extrude it. That's a little much. I just fill that in about like so. Click OK. All right, now let's get out of subobject mode and let's start kind of piecing this together a little bit. And that's actually fitting pretty well. Ooh, we need to make sure we set that to parent mode before we try to actually move it or do anything with it. So we'll slide that up so it doesn't actually protrude through or do anything silly. And I think we've got something here. Okay. So let's grab this guy. Now, you know, you've got an option here of maybe um, rounding this out. And of course we could line this up a little better than it is. So let's take a look at that. Now, Okay, he's not lined up with the little cup down there at the bottom, so we'll get that centered. Where do we stand up here now? Line these up a little bit. And what I'm going to do for now on this guy, that's not the guy I wanted to select at all. I want Eric. You. Thank you. I'm just going to pull this through a little bit further. And we could put some sort of a little pin there to make that look a little nicer. And what I'm going to do is jump out here to a front view. Seems like it's also kind of far away from it still. How do you mean far away from it? Like it's out pretty far. The um, Like it needs to be snugged in a little just bit? Just a little. Okay. I see what you're saying. Like start by doing yeah. that. Maybe we can pull that back to keep a little bit of that tapering, jump out of sub-object mode, and yeah, then it's just, better. you know, rotate that back out. All right. Looking cool. So far, now, uh, let's jump into extended primitives, and let me see if I can grab another capsule. Will it let me create one here? Yes, it will. It will give it some height. And I don't know where it is really in space, but we can align it to this guy, and uh, that's fine enough for now. Actually, you know, pivot to pivot's not really what I want. Let's do uh, center to center. Cool. And now we can slide this up, and we'll need to make some tweaks to it. Start off by giving it a little more height, first off. And 
And then over here, what I'll do is I'll just kind of put that right there in that center edge. And we're going to do this. We're going to increase the height overall. We'll boost the radius up just a notch. So it's going to be way too long, and I know that. Let's convert it over to an editable poly, grab our vertices, and I'm going to scale these in, and that's also going to flatten out those, uh, those caps a little bit. All right, let's get out of sub-object mode here. We'll grab this guy, hit 5, grab all of its elements, and a quick auto-smooth should solve our little problems there to a satisfactory degree. Let's jump out. We'll grab everybody, hit M, apply our material. And I think we're looking good. All right, and time-wise, it's about time to wrap it up. Well, I guess the timing is good then. Yep, so we're that... about 45 minutes in. So, all right. Well, everyone, thank you very much for tuning in to tonight's episode, and we will be back uh, tomorrow. Thanks a lot.